Okay, so why is it so that the enteral feeding or the nasogastric feeding should be avoided or contraindicated in patients who are hemodynamically unstable? So by hemodynamically unstable means that the patient is in shock or very high doses of vasopressors or anotropes. So understand that in such patients who are on very high doses of uh, vasopressors or those who are in shock, the blood flow is diverted from the bowel and other organs to the main vital organs to sustain the life, which are mainly the heart and the brain. Now, if in such patients, if we start the enteral feeding or the nasogastric feeding, the bowel has to absorb it and assimilate it and digest it. And for that, it will require the blood flow. But because the blood flow will not be diverted to the bowel because it is there in, with the heart and brain to sustain the life, the bowel will suffer, which you call as non-occlusive mesenteric ischemia or non-occlusive bowel necrosis, which can even lead to necrosis, uh, sorry, perforation of the bowel also. That's why most of the guidelines say that in hemodynamically unstable patients, enteral feeding should be avoided. So what does the guideline see how to approach this? So they say make the patients uh, hemodynamically stable. If the patient is not hemodynamically stable, try to initiate the enteral feeding within 48 to 72 hours. Uh, start with a clear liquid sort of that so that the uh, translocation of bacteria can be avoided in the bowel. If, and gradually progress. Start with 25% of the total calorie requirement and over a period of seven days build up like that. Reach to the maximum which you want to feed the patient. Even if that is not possible, try with a mixture of enteral feeding and the parental feeding like that. No guidelines gives a clear cut picture regarding this. So better go to Aspen guidelines uh, for, uh, for this reading. But this is the principle behind why hemodynamically unstable patients should not be given full-fledged enteral feeds. So do read more about it. Thank you.